Clever Coders, this is Coding Clever with a new video. Today's video's topic is about STL list. This is basically another standard template library video and I'm going to be covering the list, standard template library support for the list. So what this basically is, is basically a sequence container that allows non-contiguous memory allocations. As compared to vectors, these this is comparatively slow. These have slow traversal, but then once they are positioned and then once they have been found, right? So the insertion and the deletion are so quick. So normally when we talk about these STL list, we think about the doubly linked list, the abstract data type of it. But if we want to think of singly linked list, we can just look at the forward list which is not the purpose of this video. The purpose for this video is just covering STL list in general, which is doubly linked list format, whatever you would say. Okay, so let's just get started. So I'm gonna start by including this iterator and I'm gonna be using this. I'm gonna use this iterator. So I covered this video, you can watch it, check it out, it's on the up top right corner. And now I'm gonna include one more header file. So I'm gonna include the list, L-I-S-T. Okay, so save this and now what I'm gonna do be first of all is create my list So I'm gonna say list and now I could put anything I want So I'll just actually have an int inside of it and what I want is uh, I could just say my list So there you go. My list is created right here So what I could do I could add stuff like basic stuff. We could just have uh, my list and we could just say push underscore back to add something in the back and push uh, we could say push underscore front to add something in the front. So we could say push underscore back to add something in the back. So we could we could say anything we want inside it. We could say 10, now this 10 is added. If we want push underscore front, we could add something into the front of it. So we could say 10 or something in the front. So let's have a loop to iterate through and add stuff into it. So I'll just have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than, how about 15? So i plus plus. Now what I could do here is I could say my list, so my list dot push underscore back now, if I talk about back, now I could just add something like the iterator multiplied by three, let's say. So now it's gonna multiply it by three, so it's gonna be like zero in the first place, then zero multiplied by three, and then six, and then nine, and it's gonna go like this, all the way in the 15th place. So let's just do this, and then after that, what we could do is, um, we could show the contents of our list. So we could say, the contents of my list and I'm just gonna put a colon here and yeah we just show the contents using a for loop or I could just create a function which is much better so let's just create a function here on the top and I'm gonna be using an iterator to use it so I'm just gonna say save we're gonna use um, a return type of void because we're not pretty much returning anything so void show list and I'm gonna say let's do this put inside of a list so it's a list and we want the type inside we'll just say int and we'll say something and we could uh, we could actually have the something so this is actually pretty long I don't want something really long so I'll just say li which is list okay so I'll just put list inside here now let's create um, an iterator for this so we can just say list um, and then we have the type of it so int and then we have colon colon and then we have iterator so iterator and now we could just say it and what i want here i could just say a for loop and what's it going to do is it's going to say for int um for, well actually it's going to be it is equal to the begin so we could just say list item dot begin and then we could just say the it not equal to the list dot end uh, and then we could just keep on saying, incrementing it it times. I'm using prefix this time because it doesn't really matter. So I could just basically show out the contents of the list using ast the dereference and then the uh, element uh, list item like that. So show list is gonna do something like that. Over here, I could just call it. So I could just say show list and pass in my list. My list is over here. Uh, the thing which is my list so i'm just going to pass this list inside and hopefully it's going to work so the the content will be displayed here and yeah which is something which is a uh, list item oh yeah so over here it has to be it instead of that because of this it iterator is going to be throwing out it's going to be traversing it so it compiled 
an hour in. So now you see over here, zero, three, six, nine, 12, 15, all the way to 42, awesome. Okay, now let's have one which is basically gonna do in the other way around. So you can see that over here I could have push underscore back or I could say push underscore front. Now the difference here, you're gonna see that the 42 is gonna be now, in, instead it's gonna be showing in the front. So it's gonna be in reverse order. You're gonna see that it's gonna be in reverse order. So you can see this G++ compiled. And when I run it, you can see now 42 is popping in first and then 39 and all of them going slam down. Now you can see over here zero and then after that they're going to 42. So that's different with the front. Let's show another example of what this list could do. We have other functions um, and there's simple ones like the my list and I could say dot fr front. It's just gonna show me the element in the front. So it's gonna show me the element in the front and uh, I could say my list dot back. Could show me the element in the back. And then I could uh, um, pop in uh, the thing in the front. I could just say my dot pop underscore pop underscore front, so it's just gonna pop the thing on the front, and then pop underscore back, so my list dot pop underscore back could pop stuff from the back. If it's, if it's a list like this, so if we want a front, it's gonna show the front like this, it's gonna show the back of 40. Um, if you wanna pop the front, you could just pop this portion, gone. If you wanna pop the back, gonna pop this it's gonna leave this okay so what else is uh, in the list we have a we have a built-in reverse function we also have a sort function so let's look at a reversed one so let's say uh, reverse so this is the reverse function it's gonna reverse the list and then we could just see the risk ourselves so I can just show list again so I'll say show show list and I'll put the my list inside of and it's gonna show the reverse format of it. And then I could use the sorting of it. So I'll say my list.sort, and this is gonna basically sort it. And then I could see my list again. So I'll just say show list from here, and I'll put my list inside. Okay, so first let's delete this. And now let's go over here and uh, let's see what we could do. Uh, I wanna have in some kind of random order. So what I could just do is have some random number inside of it. So rand, um, and I'll say rand function, rand function. Okay, so let's run this. So compiling, and let's run. Okay, so this is what happened. Okay, I know it's, it doesn't make sense because I, I forgot to have some, let me, let me have some text so that we can understand what we're doing. The contents of my list, so it shows the contents. Then some operations are done, and then after that, we go, ah, uh, let's don't have anything like this. We know that what it means. We'll have a reversed, and we'll show the list. I'll say console, I'll put the list in reverse order. So the re list in reverse order, and then we could have the list in sorted order. So we could just say console output and we could just say console output. Um, the list in sorted, sorted order. And I'm just putting the end line here. And yeah, save this. So it's gonna show in reverse and it's gonna be shorted in order. So let me just run this code again. So compiling and then after that, we're running. Okay, so we run it, the contents of my list are these random numbers, all right? So the, when I say the list in reverse order, I get this elements in reverse. So how they were inputted, right? So they were like this, in this case, from the zeroth index all the way to the 14th index, and then after that, the 14th index started, and it went all the way to the zeroth index, which is this place. And then after that, when I wanted to sort them, they're sorted in ascending order. So you can see uh, 41 and then all of that in this case. Pretty cool. Uh, there are more functions. You can explore them on the internet. And I'm been gonna be signing off in this video. I think this is enough. And I hope you got like a really quick overview, a concept of how STLS work. If you like the video, like hit the like button. And yeah, it means a lot. See you guys in the next one. Peace.